So today we're going to cover a little bit of Amazon drop shipping, and we're going to talk about specifically plans of action for valid tracking rate restrictions on your seller account. Okay. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, basically what we're going to talk about is one of the metrics that you need to focus on. You need to focus on all the metrics on your Amazon seller account and, you know, literally on Facebook, on eBay, like literally regardless of where you're selling, your metrics matter so much. And it's something that you should be focused on daily, right? You should be checking this daily. But one of the specific metrics that a lot of people struggle with, uh, myself included, is valid tracking rate on Amazon because once you scale up and you're doing a lot of orders, you know, monthly, for example, or within the time frame that, you know, they kind of measure you by, one of the things that you'll notice is if you use obscure suppliers like I recommend when you're drop shipping on Amazon, that means like obviously your wholesale suppliers would be ideal or obscure retail suppliers, not like your Walmarts, for example, or your Home Depots. Because if you use those normal suppliers, like you're just rolling the dice asking, asking to get suspended, eventually your customers are gonna report it to Amazon and you're out the door, right? If you're using obscure retail suppliers or wholesale suppliers, then obviously you're pretty much in the clear as long as you're doing it well, as long as you're making sure that you're drop shipping the right products for that specific listing, and as long as you keep your customers happy, you're gonna be pretty solid. But one of the metrics that you struggle with, especially when you're doing obscure retail suppliers, is valid tracking rate because not always, but sometimes a certain supplier might have a great price product that you can make a lot of money on, but they might use like a random specific uh, shipping carrier that you struggle with to kind of categorize in your Amazon orders. Or maybe they're constantly for it. Like, for example, like one of the ones that uh, I used to use a lot, not so much anymore, is Best Buy. Well, they do a similar thing like Walmart where they almost have like DoorDash take it to the customer. And so you're going to struggle with valid tracking right there because you're not going to be able to provide a legitimate tracking number uh, to the customer. Okay? Okay. Another example of that is um, like I used to use Bed Bath & Beyond. What they used to do is they used to use uh, Nugistics and Nugistics would basically, it, it's, a, it's a partner carrier for USPS. You don't need to know any of this specifically right now. We're going to cover it briefly in the lecture here in a second. But one of the things that you'll need, that you'll notice is like you might struggle with obscure suppliers to always not not frequently but always put in the valid track always put in a valid tracking number and so it might hurt your valid tracking rate metrics okay and you need to keep that above 95% in all categories as well as overall so if for whatever reason you do go below 95% with your valid tracking rate it's not the end of the world you'll get a uh, a review or not a review, excuse me, you'll get a warning and they'll warn you that if you can't bring it back above 95%, then they're going to take away your ability to sell merchant fulfilled in that category. Okay. Because you're not providing the customer with valid tracking numbers in that category. Okay. And so this has happened to me twice and I've been able to get uh, unrestricted in those categories. It's actually a very easy fix. We're going to cover that in this lecture. So if this applies to you, check it out. If this doesn't apply to you, but maybe you're interested in drop shipping on Amazon in the future, check it out, put this in your back pocket, save the video. It's going to help you. So let's jump into my computer and I'll show you, you know, a little bit about valid tracking rate, how it can go south on you fast and a plan of action to get unrestricted in certain categories if it does. So one of the things that you'll notice um, when you start drop shipping, you know, fairly frequently and you start to scale up is you'll be getting a lot of orders, right? But one of the metrics you really have to pay attention to, well, you, have, you have to pay attention to all the metrics, actually, obviously. Um, you want to avoid, you know, IP complaints. You want to avoid, you know, customer, you know, product safety complaints. You want to order, uh, avoid order defect rate, which is like your A to Z claims and stuff like that. And three of the main ones is the are the ones that you'll see over here, which is late shipment rate. You need to keep this under 4%. We've talked about this before. Pre-fulfillment cancel rate, you need to keep this under 2.5%, which is where the fake shipping comes into play, or really just having better products that are always in stock that you know provide good tracking numbers will come into play, and obviously valid tracking rate. Okay, So you'll see that this valid tracking rate has gone under 95%. I'm going to talk about that here in a second and how you can, you know, if for whatever reason, if you can't get this above 95%, what will happen to you is they'll, they'll take away your ability to sell merchant fulfilled in certain categories. Okay. And so one of the best things that you can do, you know, to combat all of this in general is to sell more, right? Volume and volume of sales is your best friend because the more sales that you potentially have, that's why you still want to sell things that even if they're like, even if they're only like a dollar profit or like three or $4 profit, 
right? You still want to sell those things because they're going to help protect your metrics overall because they're going to add to your overall sales volume within those time windows. And then you're able to mess up on more orders. Not that you want to mess up on more orders, not that you want to ship them out late, not that you want to potentially cancel orders, not that you want to obviously input bad tracking numbers or anything like that, but it's going to help protect you in the future if you need to. Okay. So just my little two cents there. Right now, if you ever need to see like what categories, because this is just like an overall metric for your overall seller account. If you need to see what categories you're going below valid tracking rate and you can click this and it will show you the specific categories that you sell in and how many of your uh, tracking numbers for each category were deemed good or were deemed bad. OK, and so realistically, this is one of the metrics that you're going to struggle with most this and, you know, uh, you're going to struggle with all of them. But valid tracking rate is tough to keep up with if you're using obscure suppliers, because one of the things that you'll notice, um, you know, obscure suppliers use from time to time. And there's so many benefits to using obscure suppliers. Suppliers. Um, you know, you don't want to be using the Walmarts. You don't want to be using like the main suppliers uh, with a lot of products or you're really rolling the dice and you're going to get caught eventually. OK, so you want to use obscure suppliers. But one of the best or one of that's a good part, right? The one of the worst parts about using the obscure suppliers, however, is that they tend to not always, but they tend to, you know, here and there use other random shipping carriers. Right. So we're talking like on track, which is easy to input. Also, one of the things that I've noticed is like some people use Nugistics, but Nugistics even though it's something that you can input into Amazon. And these are all things you're going to learn through experience, right? Like I can't possibly create a course that's going to teach you all these little nuances of the shipping and the tracking numbers. You'll learn them through experience, right? But here's a little tidbit, right? So like one of the, the main suppliers, this is why my valid tracking rate got low, is because one of my main obscure suppliers that I use always ships with Nugistics, right? When you go into an order, one of the things that you can input in your order for a tracking number is a Nugistics tracking number. But because there's no actual ground, let me just pull it up. So for carrier, for example, this is what brought my late late shipment rate down uh, recently, right? For carrier right here, you'll see like Nugistics is an option, right? But when you go in here, there's no drop down menu like there is for anything. So you have to type in like Nugistics ground or Nugistics uh, Nugistics, right? Or Nugistics ground or whatever. And then you have to input the tracking number, but Amazon doesn't categorize that because there's no actual thing to track here for that. And they don't categorize that as an actual tracking number. Okay. So I learned going through this that you, uh, Nugistics is actually a USPS partner and they ship USPS first class mail. And you'll happen to notice that the tracking numbers start with like nine, six, whatever, whatever, whatever. They're along like USPS ones. And so they actually are USPS tracking numbers, right? But that's something that you're not going to know unless you go through it with experience. So that's one of the reasons reasons that my valid tracking rate was so low. And that's one of the reasons that it went below, right? And so you'll get a, the first thing, if you if it goes below on any of these metrics, it's not the end of the world, they'll send you a warning email and give you a chance to bring it back up over time. If you're not able to bring it back up, then they will suspend your ability to sell merchant fulfilled in those categories specifically regarding with valid tracking rate, right? Pre fulfillment cancel rate, they'll take a little bit more seriously that can result in um, a suspension of your account as a whole late shipment rate, Again, that can be taken a little bit more seriously. They're somewhat lenient on that, just like valid tracking rate. But if for whatever reason you do get an email letting you know that you're that you're at risk um, or for whatever reason you need to sub um, submit a plan of action in order to get your certain categories restored to be able to sell them merchant fulfilled. And, you know, because a lot of your different categories are valuable, you, you, you might be selling in them now. You might want to sell in them in the future. And so one of the things that you're going to need is a, is a solid plan of action. Okay. And this is proven. It got me unsuspended in those categories, like literally in less than 24 hours. So this is a proven template. Obviously, you need to this is specifically for the toy category, but you need to kind of, uh, you know, tailor this to your own. Right. So one of the things that you'll notice in any plan of action with Amazon, there's three different parts of it. Right. So the root cause of what happened the actions that you've taken immediately to address it. And then the third is the steps that you've taken to prevent future issues like this from happening. OK, so you can stop, pause this um, and, and kind of redo it your own. Uh, I will actually attach this template to the, this lecture specifically here so you can go through and download it yourself. And then if you want to, obviously, you know, tailor it to your own specific situation, your own specific category. But this overall template is very, very solid and will help you uh, get unsuspended in certain categories if your valid tracking rate in those categories goes below 95 percent over time and they and they take them away from you. OK, so let me just read it for you really fast. 
We fully understand that a major part of a delightful customer experience shopping online is for customers to know when they will receive their purchase. We completely agree that the promise of knowing the exact delivery time and being able to plan for it is just as relevant to the customers as finding the right product and price, and we aim to meet that expectation 100% going forward. This is literally me reciting back to what them what they said in their terms of service when they suspended those specific categories for me to sell in, right? So I'm literally just repeating what they said. So the root cause of that led to it, well, our seller account uh, failed to stay above the valid tracking rate, 95% overall, uh, especially in the office products and home category. So this is actually a specific, this is a different one um, from, from two of them. I've, this has happened to me twice. Uh, so if this was toys for you, then you would change this to toys. If this was office products, you would change it to office products, right? You want to tailor this to you overall. This is just like kind of a, a blanket template. Several of our orders had incorrect tracking numbers that have been mixed up with tracking numbers for other orders and incorrectly input. We take full responsibility for having an order processing system that failed to, that failed to properly keep track of shipment tracking numbers. We were unprepared for a spike in orders and we were still keeping track of everything manually at the time. We were testing out new, uh, using a new shipping carriers and for some of our orders, we failed to input them correctly in our Amazon orders and when inputting their tracking. This led to a significant drop in our valid tracking rate. We fully take responsibility for doing uh, for not doing more to ensure we fully understood how to input all of our tracking numbers into Amazon orders properly. So we're taking responsibility. We're literally listing out the certain things. And regardless, obviously, you want to make sure that this that this applies to your situation if it does. But chances are it will because you know, this is broad, right? This is, you know, literally what's going to happen to most of you when you're with your valid tracking rate issues, if you go through them. So this typically, as long as you tailor it specifically to your situation should work very, very well for you. So the immediate actions that we've taken to resolve the lower than expected valid tracking rate. Well, we reviewed all the Amazon information that they provide on keeping our valid tracking rate metrics as high as possible by literally, and then I sent them the link to their actual valid tracking rate information page. They, they love that, right? Because then they, they basically know that like, okay, you've reviewed the information, you know exactly where to get it, and you've reviewed the information on how to keep your valid tracking rate above 95% and above standard, right? And I'm literally sending them their information on it. We have upgraded to an automatic inventory and order processing software. This means our tracking numbers will no longer get mixed up because we will no longer be manually keeping track of all of our orders and tracking numbers to input. Instead, everything will be automatically kept so that we make no mistakes matching our tracking numbers to proper orders. We have also stopped using other shipping carriers outside of UPS, USPS, and FedEx. We will stick to the main ones from now on so we don't run into any issues in putting our tracking numbers properly. Again, this is blanket. This is broad. This should fit the majority of you, but again, tailor to your specific situation, okay? And you don't necessarily need to do these things, right? Like if, if you don't want to put this in there, don't put it in there, right? This you saying this doesn't necessarily mean that you're only allowed to input these in the future. This is just try, the step one is getting back, getting your account back, getting those categories unsuspended for you so that you can then again, merchant sell in those categories. All right. So you want to tell them what they want to hear. And then obviously you want to improve your listings, improve your tracking numbers, improve your process going forward so that these issues don't happen again, right? You don't necessarily have to do every single thing that you're saying in here, the main goal of this plan of action is to get your account back or to get those specific product categories back. Okay. Now, the steps we have taken to prevent lower than expected valid tracking rate going forward, we've upgraded again, I'm just repeating the same things we've upgraded to an automatic tracking system. Um, you know, this one short to prevent our valid tracking rate from going lower than expected in the future, it's going up as we speak. We've also stopped using other shipping carriers, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then at the very end, I said, thank you. We understand uh, that selling on Amazon is a privilege and we strive to provide the best service to Amazon customers. We kindly request to have our ability to sell in whatever category reinstated. Okay. And that's a good template for valid tracking rate and a good plan of action for valid tracking rate. So again, if you do get suspended in a specific category for your merchant fulfilled orders in that category, because your valid tracking rate went below 95% for an extended period of time, this plan of action tailored to your specific situation will help you get it back.